So, we have been talking about uh, noise in uh, optical receivers uh, corresponding to an optical sensor and uh, uh, in the previous lecture we were talking about uh, noise mitigation and uh, we figured uh, that uh, maybe averaging or uh, filtering could be effective techniques to uh, mitigate the noise and hence uh, improve the signal to noise ratio of uh, uh, whatever we are trying to sense. Okay. Now, uh, there are conditions under which uh, uh, these techniques that we have considered are not good enough okay. and uh, we need to look for uh, uh, even better technique in terms of uh, mitigating noise and uh, one of those techniques is uh, uh, a lock-in detection technique or in other words, uh, it is also called phase sensitive detection technique. So, that is what we are going to look at today. So, let us actually consider a signal. Um, let us say this is uh, V s as a function of uh, time and uh, let us say uh, V s is actually corresponding to uh, RMS voltage of uh, say 10 nano volts. Okay. Uh, so, you have uh, a sine wave at 10 kilohertz corresponding to uh, you know with, a, with an amplitude of uh, uh, RMS of uh, 10 nano volts. Okay. So, we are looking at uh, something like this, right. Um, but of course, we know that uh, with the presence of noise, uh, you know it is going to get corrupted. Um, if you look at the corresponding um, say the frequency domain uh, of the signal, what do you expect for a sine wave? Well, for a sine wave uh, what we expect is uh, something uh, a, a delta function right. If it is exactly at uh, 10 kilohertz you expect a, a delta function at uh, uh, 10 kilohertz, right. But uh, problem with this is uh, this signal uh, RMS is only corresponding to uh, 10 uh, nano volts and uh, that is not uh, filling your ADC. So, you need to boost up the signal. Okay. So, if you try to boost up the signal and you, you, you want to use an voltage amplifier, typically a op amp based amplifier and we looked at the noise characteristics of different op amps. Let us say you pick the best op amp available out there like a OPA 657 or something like that, a FET based amplifier. Um, you have what is called the voltage uh, noise density for the amplifier. Um, so, let us say we have the voltage noise uh, density of this amplifier which is one of the best amplifiers uh, that you can find, op amps that you can find in the market. Um, you know it is in the order of uh, 5 nano volt per root hertz. Uh, so, we have a um, a signal of uh, 10 kilohertz, right. So, maybe you need to have a bandwidth uh, in the order of uh, uh, let us say 100 uh, kilohertz, okay. And uh, let us say we are trying to boost up the signal um, by a factor of 1000, right. So, the gain uh, that we want to achieve is, uh, is a factor of 1000. So, your uh, signal actually uh, you know gets multiplied by 1000 and, and becomes 10 micro volt which is a reasonable value. But uh, question is what happens to the noise? Well, if you make this calculation right. So, you uh, substitute uh, I mean you, you multiply to get the voltage noise, the input referred voltage noise, you have to multiply 5 nano volt um, per root hertz multiplied by root of this bandwidth of the amplifier which is uh, 100 kilohertz. And if you multiply that and then 
then that is the input referred noise. So, you know if you want to look at what is the uh, output of that amplifier, you have to multiply that by 1000 as well. So, your uh, noise voltage uh, is basically 5 multiplied by uh, root of uh, 100 kilohertz is 10 power 5 right multiplied by 1000. If you do this multiplication you get to uh, say about uh, 1.6 uh, millivolt RMS of, of your uh, noise voltage. Now your signal voltage is 10 micro volts and your noise voltage is 1.6 millivolts right. So that is much much larger than the signal. Um, but of course, you realize that your noise is actually something like this. It's it's basically it's it's broadband noise, and um, you don't necessarily uh, need to uh, integrate. Of course, we are we are talking about uh, uh, you know integrating up to uh, 100 kilohertz here. Uh, that's the bandwidth that we are considering. So we are integrating only up to. 100 kilohertz, but nevertheless, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, for a for a case like this where you're uh, uh, you're trying to pick up a particular tone at uh, 10 kilohertz, you don't necessarily need all that bandwidth from your amplifier. So you might argue that, hey, why can't I, um, you know, throw in a, a, a bandpass amplifier, right, and and limit my uh, noise. Okay, so I'd say okay. Um, I use a bandpass. Uh, so uh, I use a bandpass filter, right? I use a bandpass filter with um, say a Q of uh, hundred, right? Uh, so that's the Q factor for the filter. Uh, well, which which actually says okay, uh, the ratio of the center frequency over the, uh, uh, the, the bandwidth of the filter uh, that is a factor of 100. So, in our case our center frequency is uh, 10 kilohertz. So, you would say that in if you use uh, something like this your delta F right the filter bandwidth is going to be um, still uh, you know 10,000 10, divided by 100. So, that is going to be 100 hertz. So, effectively what we are saying is um, I am going to now uh, filter my um, I am going to apply a filter whose uh, width is 100 hertz and uh, try to pick up my, uh, the, the signal. And that way what I am doing is I am actually um, erasing all of this and instead I have only uh, you know noise within that filter um, bandwidth right. So, I, I am improving my signal to noise ratio. Now, let us go back and compute what is the signal to noise ratio expected here. So, in this case uh, if you do V n, V n is 5 multiplied by uh, uh, root of uh, 10 power 2 multiplied by uh, uh, 1000 right. Oh, by the way, uh, so this is actually 5 nano volts. So, uh, this is there is actually a 5 into 10 power minus 9 come into the picture that is that is why we get this value here. So, this is by into 10 power minus 9 multiplied by this and um, if you do this you get something like uh, 50 micro volts ok. So, better than before, but you still have a signal to noise ratio that is uh, much less than 1 ok. So, uh, we are not really doing the job we are not we are not actually uh, able to pick up the signal very well. Uh, from 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 the noise ok. So, so it, it we are essentially still considering a case where uh, this is looking like this right. So, we are not we are not able to uh, pick up the signal uh, 
properly from this. So, what do we do uh, in, in this case? Well, one thing that you want to realize here is when we are doing this uh, detection, we are actually integrating uh, over this uh, noise and uh, the noise essentially has a random phase. The signal has got a very well defined phase, okay, because it's got a nice sinusoid, it's got a very well defined phase, but the noise is, is all over the place, the, the phase of the noise is all over the place. So, if you are able to limit your detection to a phase corresponding to only the signal phase and you are eliminate, eliminating all other uh, phase components of the noise, okay. If you are able to do that, that will constitute a method where you can get the highest signal to noise ratio, okay. Uh, so, what do I mean by that? Well, let me try to explain. Okay, so let us actually represent our signal um, as uh, Vs, uh, you, you can just say it is it's, it corresponds to a particular frequency we picked up uh, 10 kilohertz as a frequency and some arbitrary phase is got. So, uh, you can represent it in terms of a phasor e power j omega t omega s is the is the signal frequency multiplied by time plus uh, some arbitrary phase phi s this is a signal that we are trying to pick up but of course uh, it is um, you know it's corrupted by uh, some noise now if i want to uh, represent this signal, you, uh, you understand this is actually a complex signal, right? It has got a particular phase associated with it. Um, so, if you want to represent the signal, you go for uh, representation in the complex plane. You, you actually try to represent it as a phasor, okay? So, you go for this uh, complex plane representation where this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis, okay. And the signal that we are trying to uh, get uh, is, is basically, uh, let us say, a, a particular uh, a phasor here in this, uh, which has a particular phase, uh, we are calling it phi s, okay. And of course, um, this is a periodic signal. So, uh, it just means that as a function of time, this phasor is actually, uh, uh, you know, just rotating uh, uh, around this plane uh, 360 degrees for uh, every um, one cycle of, uh, of the frequency, you, you basically complete one rotation. That is what happens in a phasor. So, a uh, phasor does not really represent uh, the frequency. Right? So, it just, it just represents the phase because that is what we are uh, interested in as far as uh, uh, what, what we want to discuss is concerned. Now, uh, that is actually the signal, but what about the noise? Uh, even if you consider noise at that particular frequency, you will find that the noise has got uh, arbitrary phase. Of course, uh, it can have one component uh, along this signal, but it also has other components, right? So, effectively, uh, it either adds to the signal or it acts against the signal or just uh, add in some arbitrary manner and that is what we see as variations in your signal, right? So, that is that is what we get to see as these variations around the signal because that is because of this noise uh, phasor is, is actually uh, uniformly distributed over uh, 2 pi phase, okay? Now, is there a way we can actually uh, pick up uh, one particular phase uh, vector of the uh, phasor of the of the noise uh, from all of this and, and reject 
all other phasers okay is there is there a way we can do that okay uh, that is the key question we are asking so essentially what we are uh, talking about is if we can do uh, a phase sensitive detection okay if we can do a phase sensitive detection then you can uh, eliminate all these other noise components okay and uh, then of course you still have to deal with this particular uh, noise component which uh, may not only be uh, even though it's at the same phase it might still have some uh, uh, fluctuation in terms of the uh, actual amplitude okay but but that's the that's the limit okay whatever fluctuations there you you got to take that and and move on but uh, you are still able to eliminate all the other uh, phasers okay so that's the key part so how do you do that well um, we can do that provided you know you take this signal here uh, this is basically let's just consider uh, instantaneous uh, representation of the signal so this is vs cos uh, omega s t plus phi s okay that's the incoming signal now i uh, beat it or mix it okay with uh, uh, another signal okay where we say this is vl cos omega lt plus phi l okay so what is the resultant of that uh, mixing let's just call that uh, say uh, vm of t so vm of t if you write it out that's going to correspond to uh, vs multiplied by vl plus uh, 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 sorry multiplied by uh, cos omega s t plus phi s and cos omega l t plus phi l so let's say this is cos a cos b so you have a cos a multiplied by cos b so if you are taking if you are taking if you are looking at cos a cos b then you say this is corresponding to cos a plus b minus cos a minus b divided by 2 so i would uh, say this is divided by 2 and then you have a cos of um, a plus b which is uh, corresponding to omega s plus omega l multiplied by t plus uh, phi s plus phi l right that's a cos a, a plus b term minus cos of omega s minus omega l multiplied by t um, plus phi s minus phi l the whole thing in this uh, bracket right so you that's actually the mixing term that we have uh, uh, at, at the end of this uh, at the output of this uh, mixer okay now you can uh, easily eliminate this part okay so you you say okay uh, this is actually omega s plus omega l okay so that's actually fairly high frequency let's consider a case where omega l is almost uh, uh, you know equal to omega s so you're talking about uh, uh, two times omega s type of frequency so you can mm, you know deploy a, a low pass filter here and uh, you get v naught of t right um, and on top of that let us say uh, we have a way of uh, tuning so so essentially we are we are getting uh, this term right so we, we, we so we get rid of uh, this term because of this uh, lpf and we are left with just this term okay now uh, what we can um, do is uh, if we have a way of matching uh, omega s and omega l fs and fl let's say if rather 
FL is made equal to FS, okay, then uh, this component goes away, then uh, you have Vm of T corresponding to Vs, Vl divided by 2 cos of uh, phi s minus phi l. Of course, there is a minus sign. I will not bother about that because it is just a uh, pi phase shift and, and that is not uh, really a matter. I mean, we can we are just looking at the magnitude of this. Now, if we uh, look at this, uh, what does that tell you? It says that I am able to pick up um, the signal uh, and and uh, you know I, I can I can basically uh, it, the, my signal can be maximized by uh, tuning this uh, phi l okay uh, and and making it equal to phi s right then this becomes uh, zero then then cos becomes one so that's when you get the maximum signal okay. Um, so, all, all we are talking about here is uh, if I incorporate a, a, a phase shifter, a, a tunable phase shifter, I can uh, uh, tweak that phase until I see maximum voltage there. Okay? And at that point, now you have uh, maximized your signal. And effectively what you have done in this case is you are picking up only this uh, component, only a very particular phase of your uh, incoming signal. Okay. So, so, how does this differ from uh, a filtering? Well, in filtering we are of course, reducing the frequencies uh, and uh, we are limiting the frequencies to a, a, uh, to a very small uh, part around the frequency of interest, um, but you, you, you do accumulate noise and the noise has some random phase, uh, but in this case what we are doing is uh, uh, by, by uh, actually uh, doing lock in detection, you are doing phase sensitive detection. So, you are limiting the noise to essentially this uh, this phase only okay so that is uh, essentially the concept of uh, uh, lock in detection um, so that seems fairly powerful uh, but uh, is that good enough well the Answer is it is probably not the best because uh, when uh, phi s minus, so this is a cosine function, right? So, uh, so if you are plotting this, right, um, phi s minus phi l, um, so it is, it is it is a maximum and a minimum and so on, um, but uh, over here uh, it is actually uh, not very sensitive, it is flattens out over here at, at a phase of 0, right. And uh, similarly you can say at this point it once again flattens out and uh, uh, at, at those places it is very hard to uh, get. Uh, your uh, uh, signal, uh, maximize the signal uh, because the phase resolution that you get is, is very small. Okay. So, if you want to get around that, uh, what you need to do is not just this, but uh, you need to do uh, quadrature detection. What is quadrature detection? What if um, along with your uh, cos, right, you are able to get a, a sign signal of the same uh, phase difference as well, okay. What if you are able to simultaneously get cosine as well as the sine. So, whenever the cosine uh, it is uh, relatively insensitive, if you are picking up the sign, you can say that the uh, you know, if you if you have another channel which provides you this with uh, this sort of a function, right? 
right? Um, then wherever uh, the sensitivity is very low here, uh, the sensitivity is very high and uh, just by looking at both of these components, you can actually pick up the phase accurately, okay? So that is the advantage of uh, doing quadrant detection. Um, but uh, I, I do want to mention that a uh, lot of these examples um, are uh, being uh, considered, uh, you know, this is actually a very good reference, uh, Stanford Research Systems is a, uh, is a pioneer as far as uh, lock-in amplifiers goes and uh, they have a very nice uh, application note where they consider some of these examples uh, which, which I have uh, used here, okay. So let, let me just get back here and uh, let us actually explain uh, uh, what is uh, quadrature lock-in detection. So, um, what if we are able to take this uh, incoming signal and split it into two parts, okay. Um, so, let us say they are both equal parts uh, Vs of T and Vs of T here, okay. And uh, they go through their uh, respective uh, mixers, okay. And uh, the signal that you get from uh, uh, what that uh, Vl of T, okay, that is actually called the local oscillator. So, the local oscillator, let us say, is this uh, source which is providing um, uh, VL of T. In this case, uh, this will be like a cos of omega L T plus phi L. But in the other side, uh, you actually have a 90 degree phase shifter, right? And uh, then you do the mixing. And then of course, uh, just like previously, you take the mix output, um, let us let us say this channel is called uh, uh, Vmx of T and this channel is called Vmy of T and both are actually going through the respective uh, low pass filter, okay. And, uh, the output we call this V O uh, X and uh, this is V O Y, okay. So, in this case uh, what happens? Now, of course, uh, V O X we can uh, directly write, right. So, V O X is going to correspond to V S multiplied by V L divided by 2 um, cos of uh, phi S minus uh, phi L. Okay, so that part uh, we already know from our previous discussion. But what about um, V O Y, right? Here, uh, in this case, this uh, V L of T for for uh, this mixer corresponds to um, V L multiplied by sine of omega L T plus phi L, right? In this case, it's it's basically what is what's going in is uh, V L cos of omega L T plus phi L, right? That's what is going in here. But what's uh, what's actually uh, going into this mixer is V L sine because we have incorporated a 90 degree phase shift. Okay. So then uh, when you mix this, so V S of T is V S uh, cos of omega S T plus phi s. So, when you mix with this, you have a uh, sin and cos uh, multiplication. So, that you know it corresponds to sin of a plus b uh, plus sin of a minus b, right. So, in, in, in that case and then of course, you do your um, low pass filtering. So, what you get out of that is, uh, maybe I will I'll just write it out. So, you have sin of omega s plus omega l t plus phi s plus phi l, right, plus uh, sin of 
omega s minus omega l t plus phi s minus phi l. So, this is actually uh, what you have for V m y of t. So, if you send it through the low pass filter and uh, also make sure that uh, I mean as we did before we are already making sure that uh, the frequency of the local oscillator corresponds to the frequency of the incoming signal. Uh, then uh, uh, what you get is V O y corresponds to V s multiplied by V l divided by 2 sin of uh, phi s minus phi l. Okay. So, you can see that uh, V O x and V O y are, uh, are in quadrature with respect to each other and that actually describes this uh, situation that we have here where uh, you know uh, where you can say that uh, this corresponds to V O x and this corresponds to V O y. Okay. So, uh, so you, you that is that is how you are able to implement this uh, quadrature uh, detection technique and of course, once you have this then um, you can you can say based on this uh, you can say phi s minus phi l is going to be uh, given by uh, tan inverse of uh, uh, V O y divided by V O x right. So, you can get the uh, phase of the incoming signal if you know phi l you, 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 you are able to get the phase of the incoming signal and uh, uh, and if you want to get the magnitude of this, uh, so the magnitude is going to be root of uh, V O x square plus V O y square, right. So, you can you can get both the uh, magnitude and the phase of, uh, of, of the, uh, you can retrieve the magnitude and the phase and of course, um, we are multiplying with uh, V L here. So, uh, effectively, you know, if you if you write it out, that corresponds to uh, V s V l uh, V s multiplied by V l, right? So that is uh, essentially telling you that um, you can also boost up your signal by uh, boosting up uh, V l uh, to some extent. You can you can you can do that as well, right? So you get an amplification of your signal as well. Um, so, but the, but the key point is this is actually phase sensitive detection. So, you are able to keep the noise level uh, to uh, a very low value. Now, what is the downside of this? Uh, well, we are characterizing uh, V s as, uh, as a single frequency signal. Okay. So, if you have a single frequency signal then this, this works out very well. Okay. Um, in, so, how do you ensure that and also we are saying uh, F s has got to be equal to F l. So, how do we, uh, uh, how do we ensure that? What you can possibly do is and we will see examples of this. Um, we can modulate our light source. We are talking about implementing this in a uh, optical sensor, right? So we have a light source and a light detector. It, this is actually, uh, you know, what what we are seeing here as the input to this is beyond that uh, initial photodiode and and TIA. You have a certain voltage, and that's after that is where uh, you are actually implementing this lock-in detection. Okay, so. Um, what if you can actually modulate, I mean let us say in a sensing application you are picking up strain or temperature which is varying very slow uh, with respect to time, right. Uh, so, the most of my information is actually uh, in, in DC, around DC, right, it is it's, it's quasi static type of information, right. So, uh, let me just explain this. So, what, what I am considering is 
if I am looking at the spectrum of my information, my information may be you know uh, the, the information that I am sensing may be only around this. Okay? But if I uh, use a modulated light, okay, uh, if I am if I'm actually modulating at uh, say a frequency of uh, Vm, sorry Fm, then uh, I am looking at uh, in a perturbations to that particular carrier, that carrier frequency is uh, Fm and I am looking at perturbations to that carrier. So, I have uh, basically something like this, that is my information. Okay. And uh, uh, since you know, uh, since you are the one that is providing this modulation frequency, right? So, you, you say basically take the same, so this is my, uh, uh, let us say my, uh, sorry, I should not draw there. So, uh, this is my source, I am modulating with this uh, FM, right? Uh, and uh, that is actually going through perturbation and then it is going coming to the uh, receiver, right? And within this receiver, you basically need this reference. So, this reference. essentially could be the same reference as uh, as this okay so that actually you don't need an independent source you basically use that same reference and uh, think so that way you make sure that uh, uh, fs and fl are the same right and uh, then you can do your entire detection to to get these uh, signals okay so that's how you would uh, implement in in a, in a real sense uh, as far as the optical uh, sensor is concerned okay